Today we're going to read the story of Jesus' birth. Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people, just as he promised in the beginning. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Mountains would have bowed down, seas would have roared, trees would have clapped their hands, but the earth held its breath. As silent as snow falling, he came in, and when no one was looking, in the darkness he came. There was a young girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. Joseph was the great, 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 great grandson of King David. One morning, this girl was minding her own business and suddenly an angel appeared right there in her bedroom. He was Gabriel and he was an angel, a special messenger from heaven. When she saw the tall shining man standing there, Mary was frightened. You don't need to be scared, Gabriel said. God is very happy with you. Mary looked around to see if perhaps he was talking to someone else in the room, but he was talking to her. Mary, Gabriel said, and he laughed with such gladness that Mary's eyes filled with sudden tears. Mary, you're going to have a baby, a little boy, and you will call his name Jesus. He is God's own son. He's the one, he's the rescuer, the God who flung the planets into space and kept them whirling round and around. The God who made the universe with just a word. The one who could do anything at all was making himself small and coming down as a baby. Wait, God was sending a baby to rescue the world? But it's too wonderful, Mary said, and felt her heart beating hard. How can it be true? Is anything too wonderful for God, Gabriel asked. So Mary trusted God more than what her eyes could see, and she believed. I am God's servant, she said. Whatever God says, I will do. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now, Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem, the town King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found every room was full. Every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeepers told them. There isn't any place for you here. Where would they stay? Soon, Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old tumbled down stable. So they stayed there where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. And there, in the stable, amongst the chickens, and the donkeys, and the cows, in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born. His baby son, God's own baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. Because, of course, he had. That same night, in amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright star appeared. Of all the stars in the dark vaulted heavens, this one shone clearer. It blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale beside it. God put it there when his baby son was born to be like a spotlight shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people the way to him. You could see God was like a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these long years for this moment, and now he wanted to tell everybody. So he pulled out all the stops. He'd sent an angel to tell Mary the good news. He'd put a special star in the sky to show where his boy was, and now he was gonna send a big choir, a choir of angels to sing his happy song to the world. He's here, he's come, go see him, my little boy. 
Now, where would you send your splendid choir? To a big concert hall, maybe? Or a palace, perhaps? Well, God sent his to a little hillside, outside a little town in the middle of the night. He sent all those angels to sing for a raggedy bunch of old shepherds watching their sheep just outside of Bethlehem. In those days, remember, people used to laugh at shepherds. And, and they say they were smelly and call them other rude names. You see, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraff. But God must have thought shepherds were very important indeed, because they're the ones he chose to tell the good news to first. That night, some shepherds were out in the open fields, warming themselves by a campfire, when suddenly the sheep darted. They were frightened by something. The olive trees rustled. What, what was that? A wing beat. They turned around, and standing in front of them was a huge angel, blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone, everywhere. Today, in David's town in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go and see him. He's sleeping in a manger. Beside the angel, they saw a strange glowing cloud, except it wasn't a cloud. It was more angels, troops and troops of angels armed with light, and they were singing a beautiful song, glory to God, to God be fame and honor and all our hoorays. Then, as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. Well, the shepherds quickly stamped out their fire, left their sheep, and raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobble streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, past an inn, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last, until at last they reached a tumbled-down old stable. They caught their breath, then quietly they tiptoed inside, they knelt on the dirt floor. They had heard about this promised child, and now he was here, heaven's son, the maker of the stars, a baby sleeping in his mother's arms. This baby would be like that bright star shining in the sky that night, a light to light up the whole world, chasing away the darkness, helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine. Far away in the east, three wise men saw the very same star, the star that God had put in the sky when Jesus was born. They knew it was a sign. A baby king had been born. They had been waiting for this star. They knew it would come. He's here, they shouted. He's here. And I'm sure if you'd been there, you would have heard them laughing and dancing and singing the whole night until the sun came up. At dawn, they packed their camels and wrapped gifts for the baby. They brought their most precious treasures of all, frankincense and gold and myrrh, special, sparkly, lovely smelling, gleaming things that would be just right for a king. The three wise men, actually, if you'd met them, you would have thought they were a king's. Well, they set off, they rode their camels across endless deserts, up steep, steep mountains, down deep, deep valleys, through raging rivers, over grassy plains, night and day, day and night, for hours that turned into days, that turned into weeks, that turned into months and months, until at last they reached Jerusalem. Jerusalem was by far the most important city for miles around. And as anyone can tell you, that's where a palace would be, and kings are born in palaces. So that's where they went. But they were in for a surprise. They went to see King Herod. Surely he'd know where this baby was, but he didn't. In fact, he didn't like the sound of a new king. It made him angry. He didn't want anyone to be king except him. But Herod's advisors told the three wise men what was written in their books and what God had said about the baby king. Go to Bethlehem. That's where you'll find him. Suddenly, the star they had seen in the east started moving again, showing them the way. So the three wise men followed the star out of the big city along the road into the little town of Bethlehem. 
They followed the star through the streets of Bethlehem, out of the nice part of town, through the not-so-nice part of town, into the really not-nice part of town, down a little dirt track, until it stopped right over a little house. But wait, that's not a palace, and there weren't any guards, or servants, or flags, or red carpets, or trumpets, or anything. Did they get it wrong? Or is this what God meant? Sure enough, in that little house, there sitting on his mother's knee, they found the baby king. The three wise men knelt before the little king. They took off their rich royal turbans and gleaming golden crowns. They bowed their noble heads to the ground and gave him their sparkling treasures. The journey that had begun so many centuries before had led three wise men here to a little town, to a little house to a little child. To the king, God had promised David all those years before, but this child was a new kind of king. Though he was the prince of heaven, he had become poor. Though he was the mighty God, he had become a helpless baby. This king hadn't come to be the boss. He had come to be a servant, a savior, Christ the Lord.